Subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Ever since the COVID-19 pandemic began, there has been a lot of talk about how the virus is mutating. This has also led to a lot of confusion because of talks about strains and virulence. One of the reasons for so much confusion is the very liberal use of the word strain. A strain is a subtype of a virus and different strains are characterized by different cell surface proteins. Different strains also elicit different immune response systems from our bodies as compared to other strains. A mutation on the other hand is a very minor genetic change or error that occurs while the virus is replicating itself and this does not fundamentally change the nature or behavior of the virus. The SARS-CoV-2 virus has only one strain. In fact, it itself is one of the many strains of the coronavirus. There are thousands of coronaviruses that we know about in animals, but humans have only seen six other strains before the SARS-CoV-2 virus came along. Two of them were quite deadly, SARS and MERS, and both of them are contained now. But the other four strains regularly circulate in the human population, causing common cold-like illnesses. Viruses undergo rapid mutation because they are very primitive and their method of replication is very prone to errors. These errors are reflected in their genome sequences. In fact, it is through mutation that the SARS-CoV-2 virus and other zoonotic viruses have jumped from animals to humans in the first place. Viruses mutating is not uncommon and is completely expected. The seasonal influenza virus, for example, mutates quite rapidly. There is an influenza vaccine, but the vaccine needs to be taken every year for it to be effective. This is because the virus mutates that fast that the vaccine rapidly gets outdated. We can't yet tell if mutation is going to be a concern for COVID-19 vaccines in the future, but for now, the mutations are nothing to worry about. In fact, from what we've observed, mutations on the SARS-CoV-2 virus are actually quite slow to develop as compared to other viruses. Now, when we use the word mutation, we typically think of supervillains or being bitten by a radioactive bug and turning green. But in viruses, mutations are simply minute structural changes on the virus's surface. Each change is associated with a gene. For example, there were lots of reports earlier about the L-type and the S-type mutations and what was in Wuhan and what is circulating in India and so on. But both the L-type and S-type mutations deal with a variation in the gene called ORF8. An amino acid called leucine, indicated by L, is converted to another amino acid called serine, indicated by S. The mutation occurs on the 84th position of the ORF8 genes protein, so this mutation is called ORF8-L84S. As the naming structure suggests, ORF8 is the gene and L at 84th position gets converted to S. The changes in the virus's outer structure, which are being referred to as strains, are actually called clades. There have been many clades that are observed, but there are three that are most prevalent in the coronavirus that is circulating right now. One is clade S, which we just discussed with the L-type and the S-type mutations. Then there's clade V, undergoing a mutation called NS3G251V. This means that the NS3 gene's glycine amino acid, indicated by G, is converted to valine, indicated by V, at position 251. Another major clade is clade G, where a variant in gene S changes from D to G at position 614 and the mutation is called SD614G. There are many other clades as well, including mutations in the reverse direction in these S, G and B clades, but those are all just grouped under others category in genome databases as they are not as prevalent just yet in the SARS-CoV-2 virus that's circulating right now. Scientists across the world have already sequenced the virus over 16,000 times and these genome sequences are uploaded and available on open source public databases like the WHO's GSED and Nextstream. 
Different mutations in the virus tend to be prevalent in different geographic pockets as the virus moves through the human population. This movement can also be tracked by studying the virus's genome sequences. The mutations on this virus can act as a guide to understand how the virus moved geographically across the globe and how health interventions took place. In Wuhan, we observed the L-type and the S-type mutations in the early days. The L-type virus came to India and we could then deduce that it arrived directly from Wuhan. Then we observed mutations that indicated that subsequent infections that entered India had a source that came from Europe. The virus has since been mutating in India as well. In fact, we found many different types of mutations and just this week, a number of mutations in clade G were observed. These were of course sequenced and uploaded into public databases from India. All of this is completely normal and expected. When it comes to the effects of these mutations on the virus's ability to infect, there are actually none. There is nothing to indicate that any mutation is more virulent or stronger or less aggressive than others. There was an initial study from China that said that the L-type virus is more aggressive than the S-type, but the word aggressive was used to describe how the virus spread, not how it infected. And even this has since been revised. The L-type was not inherently better at spreading than the S-type. It turns out what had happened and resulted in the geographic variation and variation in spread was only because of human interventions and restrictions on travel. Whichever type was able to move on to other countries then, in the early days of the pandemic with fewer public health interventions, spread rapidly in the new countries and then mutated there. The virus, of course, continues to mutate in different manner in different geographic pockets. Virologists have repeatedly stated that the mutations do not vary in virulence or infectivity, which is the ability of a virus to infect a new host, or in infectiousness, which is the ability of the virus to spread the disease from one host to another. What we now know is that the SARS-CoV-2 virus will continue to mutate and this will continue to provide information to scientists about how it's moving through the population. But for those not dealing with the intricacies and technicalities of genome sequences, the virus mutating is really not a big deal and it's nothing to be concerned about. This is Sandhya Ramesh from Bengaluru for The Print.